Hello everyone, welcome to another chess video. In this uh, video I'm going to be playing in the English Chess Federation's Saturday evening rapid play, which is 10 minutes with a 2 second increment, and there's also no berserking allowed in this arena tournament, so I will have to play with that allotted time. It will be over 90 minutes, hopefully I can do this video for the entire uh, time. And so far there are 26 players in it, with me being the top seed. So I'm expected to win, but if I come in the top two or three places, it's not a disaster. It will be starting any moment, so what I've done is I have made it that I'll be watching myself <laughs> in the, on the laptop, because my computer is a bit slow with moving the mouse, and often freezes and other inconvenient things, and I'll be playing on my phone. So that way... I'll be able to commentate in, in real time without uh, worrying about the laptop's horrible, horrible <laughs> uh, speed and consistency. Right, it's just turned 8 o'clock now, UK time, so the pairings will be being done uh, any moment. 29 players now. There's a lot of 2,000 strength players, and also a few, like, 2,100 sort of... 2200 level players and here we go first game against behind blue eyes He's played a e4 opening i'm going to start off with a sicilian and he has played the alapin sicilian c3 the main line goes like this and i believe uh, knight c6 is a very common move here but i am going to take first the knight f3 is the most common but there's also uh, t taking back and then playing nice f3. Now d6 takes, and there's a beautiful move, bishop g4. So if white takes me, which they haven't done, they'll be in serious trouble. But they've instead elected to play knight c3. I will guard my knight. I'm ready to capture their pawn on d6 with developing the bishop at the same time. So not a disaster for either side. We're both relatively comfortable. I, I always feel like black has a very tiny edge, but that might just be me. Uh, I'm expecting knight takes knight on d5, so that I'll be forced to have a pawn on d5, and therefore their d4 pawn's weakness will be equaled out by my own d5 pawn weakness, where we're not able to be guarded by fellow pawns. Bishop d3 has been played instead. This is also a very good move. Bishop takes d6. Then castles is fairly common, and I believe I meant to castle as well. Uh, however, I am looking at a few other moves instead. There is knight to b4, but that looks a bit weird, because bishop b1. There's also uh, rather odd-looking moves as well, like knight to f4. It's quite interesting. There's also knight takes d4, which looks not terrible. I'm going to play bishop takes f3, though. The reason is that when their queen takes, I'm wondering if I can get away with this move. Winning a pawn. Does look a little dangerous, I will admit, because of the fact that white is developing their pieces very, very fast. So not entirely ideal for me, but... Not the worst thing in the world either. Queen e4 is the move I'm expecting from my opponent. And then I can either play... Oh no, queen g4 has been played. Alright, queen g4. This move is designed to attack the g7 pawn and also my knight at the same time. Uh, so I'm thinking that this may be okay for me. Because I can do knight takes knight... It's either knight takes knight or it's something else. Uh, knight takes knight, uh, then queen takes g7, then knight e2 should be okay for me. So let's try this. Then pawn takes c6, c3 looks like the right move, which it's being played. Now I could go knight f5, which would be would be maybe okay. Uh, but I'm thinking knight c6 is stronger, because if queen takes pawn, I can play bishop to e5, which will attack their queen and simultaneously guard my rook. 
and it will also attack their bishop on d3 with my queen. So it's like a triple attack. Because uh, it also attacks the pawn on c3. So I think g7 is is safe. I think. I don't know, but I suspect. Let's see. What will they play? Rook d1 to me looks like a solid move. Uh, and then maybe I play queen f6 so that I guard my g7 pawn, attack the c3 pawn, uh, and generally sort of get my pieces to be a bit better. Bishop g5, maybe I can take on c3. Uh, but there's, there's a few other moves. Bishop queen e5 would also be a move as well. And I can also here play uh, knight to e5 in the future, which will attack queen and bishop. So what will behind blue eyes do? I Now, I might be wrong because I uh, I often get the names mixed up of players, but I know, I know that I know him, and I have a feeling it's a junior player who's about uh, 15, I want to say, uh, who is about uh, 2100 uh, fide rating. Now... Can I play bishop takes h2, or am I just asking to get mated? That's the big question. Am, am I getting mated, or am I okay? I say go for risks. Do this. So I'm now... I think I'm two pawns up, if I'm counting correctly. Uh, but I'm uncastled. Not well developed. So I will need a little bit of time to develop the pieces. Now, there's no checks. That's the one good thing I have in my favour. No checks on my king. Downside is, oh, rook b1 has been played. I did not expect that. That's, that's shocking. Rook b1. No, didn't see that. Very good move. Uh, so, do I want to trade queens? I suspect I do. But if I go queen f5, then maybe... It's not so good, because queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes b7. So even though I'm winning, a, I'm still a pawn up, uh, I have, like, my doubled pawns are not really helping me to prove that I'm a pawn up. And, uh, yeah, it just, just feels a bit awkward. Rook, rook b1 is a good move, I think. Oh, but it can't be taken yet. I don't, I don't think, anyway. It can't be taken yet because of, yeah, the fact that... I would take the rook on f1. So now, my plan is, if they go bishop f6 or bishop h6, queen g6 can be played, queen here, which will attack their queen and their bishop simultaneously, forcing the queens off. But no, they've played rook d1. So very well. I shall capture. And this also defends the g7 pawn now with my queen. So I'm currently three pawns up. They can't allow that. Three pawns is too much. And I really want to get rid of their very annoying uh, rook. So I'm thinking rook b8 is strongest. Let's go, rook b8. I don't want to get skewered either with my queen and knight on the same file. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to trade rooks. And then, if they play rook c1, I have queen e5 check. So, I'm okay for now. Guess we'll see how it pans out. And if, if they play rook c1 now, there is also the kind of added move that I can play queen takes rook, and then rook takes rook. Which will give me a lot of material for the queen. So, it won't be a disaster to play this. Uh, but, let's see how, how things pan out. What will white play? My suspicion is rook c1 is best. Uh, but I also have a saving move. I also have, if rook c1, I have queen d4, which probably is strongest. And that way, I don't lose my knight because their queen's being attacked. So overall, things are going well. I'm a couple of pawns up with advantage. I really, in a way, I want the queens off, but in another way... I don't, because rooks and knights work really badly, and rooks and bishops work really well together, so white will have some compensation. Okay, rook c1 has been played. I think queen d4 is the best move. I want to say that's the best move. The reason is I'm attacking the queen and the rook simultaneously. Uh, therefore, white will have to either move the 
queen, but then wherever it moves, I take the rook. Or they're going to have to take my queen, uh, and then I take back with the knight, and I'm fairly comfortable, I think. Uh, and if rook takes a7, that's probably the best move. Uh, but maybe I can play rook b2 after, or actually rook a8 might be strongest. And then trade a set of rooks off the board. Yeah, it looks good. Queen takes, knight takes, yep, then rook takes. So now rook b2 or rook a8. That's the key key move to find. Um, hmm. So rook b2, then they can play rook c7, which is a touch annoying. So I think I'll do this. I don't want there to be two rooks on the board. Uh, if it's just one rook, I, yeah, I feel like I can I can hold fairly comfortably. And then my opponent's offering me a draw, which I don't think I need to think twice about declining. I could have even done knight takes rook, and that would still give me the edge. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm going for uh, going for that precious pawn on a2. And I need to improve the king quite soon. Okay, their, their move doesn't really help them too much. Can I go f6? No, I can't. f6 is rubbish. Uh, <laughs> I can't go f6. That's the end of that question. Right, so knight to e4, going for the bishop. I want to say that um, bishop back to e3 will be played, but it's possible I could play rook d8 check and hope their passed pawn will be enough. I have, a, I have a feeling that personally it won't be, uh, but it's not it's not a terrible idea to play that. Now bishop e3, possibly I have uh, moves like h5, um, where my, the a2 pawn actually is being attacked. Yeah, I like that move. h5, and then king h7 is always a safety move. Where else could they go? Bishop e7 is a move. And then, uh, where can I go? I, could, I mean, I could play knight f6, but I don't like that move. I could just take the pawn on f2, which will give me something at least. So I've built up a time advantage as well, with this two-second increment being very useful to avoid me getting too nervous. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, the moment the a2 pawn is won, then all the pawns will be on the same side of the board, the king side. And that's where knights are better than bishops, if everything's happening in one area. Right now, though, where there's two wings of attack for white, then my knight is inferior to the bishop. So it's worth maybe, I don't know, like a, a third of a pawn or something, having a bishop to an, uh, instead of a knight. So really, I'm a pawn up, but minus minus a, a third so i'm two-thirds of a pawn up taking a long time to think on this one that's what i like means that either they did not see that move or they're they're looking at the complications that will arise so bishop e3 pawn h5 how do they save the pawn I don't see how. Bishop e3 has been played. h5. Oh, whoops, nearly made a move with the wrong machine. Uh, right, h5. Going for this. Now, f3 is a move. But then I think I have knight c3 to doubly attack the pawn. And rook a7. Clever. Rook a7. Do we trade? I say affirmative. Trade the pieces, then prevent the pawn getting too far. And then I just need to figure out which pawn, if any, to push. You could play e5, but there's no need to. g5 is a move. g5 looks like an interesting move. I think I think just playing it safe with king f8 is good. Yeah, they're bringing their king up. Just g6 to make sure that I'm safe. What I'm hoping for is to play king d6. And then I can play knight b5 hitting bishop and pawn and there's no guard there's no guard. 
Oh, I guess there's bishop b8 check, but anyway, my, I get my king active is the point. And if they ever play king to g5, here, my knight can attack both at once with knight e4 check. Okay. King improves. King g5 error. King to um, e5 is an interesting move, though. But I think f6. Now, king d4, huge blunder. Knight b5 check. Yep, so they've prevented that uh, from occurring. Uh, king d6 looks good. Improving myself, because if, if bishop d4, then e5 check. King e3. Now the annoying move is that knight b5, bishop to... Um, yeah, bishop to b8. So what I'll do is play king d5 to prevent check. And that way, uh, I can now win the pawn. But they, ah, they have this move. Clever. All right, so knight to e4 is a move, but then f3 comes in. Knight to d1 is a move. Hmm, knight to d1 is a move, actually. Uh, check, king d3, uh, e5, bishop uh, b6, let's say. Hmm, b6. Yeah, so do I keep the pawn or do I trade? That's the big question. Because even though I win the pawn on A and I lose the pawn on F, it's possible that white may draw that. So knight d1. Now I have to be careful about my knight being trapped. That's the that's the uh, sword of Damocles over my head. So this e5 is a critical move to force the bishop away so that my knight has a square. Either b2 or, or f2. Now, I don't think they'll want to give up the f2 pawn, so that logically means that they have to give up uh, the b2 square. So bishop b6 looks like a solid move. Ah, but bishop b6 might fail, so knight b4, b2 check, and then knight c4 forking these two. So bishop a7 has to be played. Not an easy move to find. So... Bishop a7 is correct, I think. And he has a minute. No, he's played bishop b6. Okay, so knight comes in. They do have bishop uh, d8 at the last second, which may uh, that may annoy me. Although their king, uh, oh, their king has to find the right place. It hasn't. Okay, go here. Now, I think I am going to have to give that that pawn up on f. Hate to do it, but I think it was necessary. Now, where to put my knight or my king? I think, even though king to e4 is really good, do I save the knight? Is there a, is there a place for it? I'm going to say yes. Because I can play knight b5 no matter what, or knight c2 no matter what, and then bring it to d4. So my king is really active. Uh, and if I can bring the knight to d4, d3, f4, somewhere like that, I should be doing fine here, a pawn up. And if f3 check, I have king f5 gaining tempo, at the very least, if not king f4. Yeah, king comes over. Check. Okay, he's running around, going behind my pawns. So quickly bring the knight in. And if f3, I mean minimum I can take. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for this pawn. Okay, take it then. Right, fascinating. What do I play? I think knight f4, knight f4, king can't move, bishop has to move, but the problem is that then I, he goes bishop f6, and I can't stop, uh, yeah, I can't uh, I can stop him from stopping my pawn, so that makes sense. So first h4, then bishop, bishop h6 doesn't work. Now, king there. So knight f4 check, king f6, pawn up, and I think I win. So my pawn on H, the H file is unstoppable. Yep, and I won the game. Hooray! So that was a, I think that was a good game. He played well, to be honest. It was a, it was a very technical ending. 
All right, well, that's a win. My first win. There's only only nine people on two points. Uh, I'm first place just because I'm higher rated, but really we're all the same. Uh, then who could I play next? It really depends on on uh, who's finished first, really. Uh, the player on uh, two points, Moonmaker, is uh, is currently playing a, his second game or her second game. Uh, chess King and Chess Queen are still playing. And a few others. Who will I get? Generally, this site will pair you with somebody who's the closest in terms of rating, if you're on the same points. So that means I could play... There's not many people above 2,000 who, is, who are finished. So I might get somebody like... Uh, uh, who could I get here? There's a few 1800s who have finished their games. Because in the first round, you're paired with the person who's closest to you in rating. So number one played number two, number three, number four, etc. Here we go, Chess King. And I can't Berserk, I have to remember that. E4 will be my move against Chess King. And he is playing, I assume it's a he, because this, this king is the male, uh, the male version. So, ah, we're playing this line. The French Rubenstein. This is a fun, fun one. Okay. Knight takes. Bishop g5. Bishop e7 is the main line. h6 is a... To me, it's an inferior move, because I think it helps white playing bishop h4. Uh, but it is, it is sometimes seen to play this. And c5, to me, is a bit early, but it is a move. Uh, and then I think, if I take... Uh, queen takes, rook takes, bishop takes. And, yeah, I just I never liked this very much, but it is playable to do this. Um, and it releases all the tension, which is a bit dull. Uh, so, can I play bishop d3? That's the main move. Then bishop e7, and then take it. Uh, or do I play something else? I can never quite remember the main line. Uh, I will play bishop d3, because it looks fun. point of it is, if pawn takes and knight takes, there's a very common trap where if the queen takes back on d4, I have bishop b5 check to win the queen. Uh, and if queen a5 check to try and win my bishop, I can block with either my queen or my bishop on d2. So I'm fine. There's no, there's no like winning loads of my pieces. So how will he, uh, I assume he, play on? And we both used up a little bit of time playing this out, but it's not a disaster. E5 is an interesting move for black. Uh, it feels a touch uh, inaccurate, though, because of moves like uh, bishop b5 check. Okay, bishop c5 has been played. Uh, I want to say knight b3, and I think bishop e7 is the move played these days. Uh, I don't believe bishop f2 works, because king takes knight g4, queen takes g4. Uh, so bishop e7, then I think castles... Is, no, bishop e6, okay, that makes sense. Alright, castles. And then, yeah, castles themselves. Now, I want to prevent any chance of, like, b6, bishop uh, b7 and stuff. So what I'm going to do is sort of aim at their knight, uh, which will now be unhappy. Uh, but also, I have this... Um, bishop takes knight, doubling the pawns up. And if queen d5, which is the move I'm now considering, I was wondering if I could play uh, queen g3, but it might be it might be a little bit uh, inaccurate to play that. Wish I knew my theory a little better, to be honest, because <laughs> then I could I could more confidently say what I was doing. Uh, Yeah, queen d5 is the kind of annoying move which they could play. Although, I, I still feel like I'm a little bit better because their bishop on c8 can't move. So perhaps I just trade queens, and they take with their knight, and I can play c4 if nothing else, and the knight's a bit awkward. Or rook d1, which looks better, to be honest. Uh, yeah, rook ad1 looks solid. So how will black 
counter my ideas. Bishop d7 is an interesting gambit, which will give up the b-pawn. Uh, however, they can play rook c8 and then bishop c6 to give themselves a lot of initiative. So bishop d7 might be the best choice, and it? and it is played. This move has indeed been done. I'm not going to take it. I'm going to improve my position with rook d1. Now, bishop c6, I can play queen h3. And their queen is uh, potentially being attacked with bishop takes h6. My rook is lined up with the queen, which is very awkward. This could be a checkmating move later in the game. And there's a few other things I'm, I'm considering as well. There's also bishop takes knight. Uh, bishop takes knight, uh, and then they take back, and then I can use this pin with the move bishop to b5. So I've got like three or four attacking plans. And if nothing else, I might be able to take b7 uh, in the future, uh, in addition to all the other stuff. That's why I think bishop e7 for black is better. This bishop is a little bit misplaced. It should be on e7. And now here is the moment of, of, of truth. What will they play? Bishop c6. So it's possible that my idea just doesn't work, which uh, wouldn't be the first time, but I'll try this. Just the simple idea of mate on h7, but coupled with... Uh, so, so the idea is bishop takes knight first, and then, then checkmate. And if nothing else, I have bishop takes h7 winning the queen. So two big threats. Can they survive? Let's eliminate moves. Uh, if they move their queen, I take the knight, winning. If they move the bishop in front of the queen, like d5, I can still do that plan, taking the knight. Uh, if they move the king, I take that. Basically, everything is taking the knight. Uh, apart from maybe h6, in which case I would take, uh, I would play bishop h7 first, and then take the queen with the rook. Well, overall, I'm, I may lose the bishop and a rook for a queen. So that's the thing black might rely on that they have the bishop pair, and it's only a point down. So there would still be a lot to play for in this uh, position. But it's never pleasant losing your queen. And Chess King is still deliberating, about halfway down on the clock. What will they do? Uh, they could try... They could try stuff, weird stuff like Rook E8, which would potentially save them. Uh, but what's horrible about that is bishop takes h7 still just looks too strong. Uh, as well as, obviously, uh, bishop takes knight. So possibly h6 is the best move. And then... Uh, yeah, I have the choice. Either win the queen or do some huge sacrifice. Bishop takes h6. I'm not really in the mood for sacrifices, <laughs> to be honest. So h6 has been played. All right, let's go for it. Win the queen. Does it even matter what they play? Don't think it does, because I will take the queen no matter what. And then I think potentially doubling their pawns up might be a nice idea. Although, oh yeah, bishop, bishop there is quite nice. Hmm. So bishop takes knight, bishop takes back. I don't know if I need to do that stuff. Let's play this. Just keep my position it's fairly solid, you know, keep the control uh, in the position. I'm thinking knight d4 might be nice for next turn. Try and get their bishop pair off the board. And also rook d1, you know, improving the worst piece. Okay, bishop e7. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, rook d1 does give me something here. Knight a5 is another move I could try. Knight a5 is interesting because it's not easy for them to kind of defend themselves. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. Knight d4. 
My queen has lots of squares it can use. For example, uh, c3, b3, d3, f3. Uh, so this move generally will help me. Just a, so they've got the two, the d file and the c file for their rooks, which are very very useful. And my king, while it is safe right now, I can see a future maybe in five or six moves where it won't be as safe. Yeah, bishop e3 has been played. Uh, e4 has been played. All right. Well, protect myself with c3, closing the c file. So now it's just the d file that I need to be concerned with. And I'm thinking maybe queen to e3 next turn is a good move. It would centralize the queen, attack the bishop, potentially sacrifice an h6 much later in the future, and also uh, maybe prepare uh, good rook moves like rook d1, rook e1. Uh, but there's also rook e1 straight away. Yeah, rook e1 straight away. Ooh, it nearly wins. <laughs> it nearly wins. Um, I was thinking rook e1, rook takes bishop. Uh, then queen d3, but they have f5 at the end. Alright, so queen e3, just improving the position. And I might have threats fairly soon, yeah, bishop g6, making sure there's no attacks on their bishop later on. Uh, knight d5 is a move they could try uh, in the next uh, few turns. Not overly concerned with it. But yeah, it could be could be annoying. Hmm. All right. Well, let's just you know make sure I'll protect myself. And I could come to h4, pinning the knight, which might be a useful endeavor. And essentially, this might be a war of attrition because my my position is not yet you know fully winning. It's still a little bit tricky. Um, okay, well, rookie one to line up with the open file. I might move a knight fairly soon. Then maybe h3 to give myself just a little bit of room for the king. Hmm, well, this move can always be a little annoying, attacking the b-pawn. And also, my plan is if the b-pawn moves to b5, knight c6, winning the bishop pair. And if bishop e4, I can sacrifice my rook for the two pieces. So just slow improvements to my position. I may have to move my a and b-pawns quite uh, soon, but maybe not yet. Yeah, b5, okay, time to time to go for it. It's just so it's so nice trading these pieces off. Yeah. Trade. Perfect. Okay, so that's good. Trade of the pieces. Now I can pl Ooh, can I play it? I can. <laughs> I was a bit scared of bishop h5 for a second, but I have queen d3. Actually, bishop h4 might have been a stronger move. Yeah, that was stronger, bishop h4. Uh, my move is a little bit inaccurate, but I've been I've been saved. I can play check. Hmm. But the thing is, after Bishop G six, where to go next? Because Queen D six, they play Rook D seven, I get embarrassed. Perhaps I'm supposed to play some other move. Maybe queen e2. The plan is bishop h4 next turn. Uh, I'm aware that my queen and rook are still lined up, but I still have queen c2 check, which will not quite repeat the position. My d-file is solid with the rook on it, so that black will have to trade rooks in order to try and... Uh, Rest control. Okay. Check. Bishop back to g6. Queen b3. Still holding on to my rook. And rook d7 has been played. It does get them out of the uh, nasty 
um, nasty sort of pressure that I had. But now I should be able to use to use my queen to greater effect with fewer pieces on the board. So queen a3 goes for the pawn, and I can infiltrate with queen e7 or queen d6 coming up. Yeah, rook c6. Swing in the queen. Knight to f6, possibly. Maybe knight c5 is better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got a plan. Probably not a very good one, but I do have, have, have a plan, at least. If knight d3, which I'm thinking of... No, knight... Ah, knight there might be stronger, actually. Yeah, good move. So I was thinking knight to d3, queen d7, which would line up with the knight later on and the uh, and the rook immediately. So my bishop is dominating the knight, still preventing rook d6. So they don't yet have the d-file for the rook. I'm preventing it having having a good place to be. They're down to 40 seconds. So it's much harder to play with a, a rook and knight versus a queen. So, little, yeah, a little bit technically difficult, but no, uh, no horrible things going on. Now, queen b7 is good, but then they have rook d8. So that's annoying, that move. I'm going to do this first. The reason for it is I don't want d8 to be used for the rook. So I'm preventing any counterplay. It's a very nice way to play the game. And also their knight has very few squares. So bishop e7, okay they're playing this, so bishop e7 actually dominates the knight. It has no square where I can't take it. So then f3 next turn will force off a trade. And they now have just a few seconds. Trade it off. Queen d6, simply going for it. I guess they could play... Oh, well, they haven't played it. I was going to say, they could play stuff like bishop e4, but it's no good. And take everything. Okay, they're playing well, but... Again, I think it's a bit too late. Down to less than 10 seconds a move. They're coming across, so a6 is useful. Then come over here. So now my pawn is about to come up the board. Bishop e4, and I think I'll take it. No, right there, okay. I don't see what they're doing, so fine. I don't know why they're playing this on. <laughs> there we go, and resigns. That's good for me. Ah, there's somebody who is a Ferrari fan who's on five points. As you can't berserk, my guess is they drew their first game to get one point, and then they won two in a row. That's quick work, winning two games, uh, three games even. Uh, right, so there's six people who are on four points or higher. So I'm essentially on, in terms of rating, I'm, I'm uh, second place. Uh, with the one player being on five and then five players being on, on uh, four points. Uh, of those f uh, other players on four, there's an 1850, another 1850, uh, a couple of 2000s, and then myself and a Ferrari fan who is in first is a 2250. But I've got football girl, football girl, 1850, roughly. Ninth place, so I'm guessing all the players uh, are otherwise engaged playing their matches. Alright, so play a Queen's Gambit, either accepted or Queen's Gambit declined. C6 would lead us to a Slav. Knight F6 would go into uncharted waters. Uh, E5, Albin counter Gambit. 
Uh, what else can they do? Knight c6, Shigorin. What will she play? c6, Slav. Right, well, I'll, I'll try knight f3 as a move. I used to play the move e3 but, uh, as my third choice, but I don't like it as much. Here, queen b3 going for the pawns on d5 and on uh, b7. Pawn takes c4 is an interesting choice, but I'm not sure I like it that much. I think queen b6 is actually the most common move, uh, but maybe queen c7 is an interesting alternative. Then I can choose to capture on d5 once and then play knight c3 just to make sure that nothing is, is uh, being lost. So yeah, queen c7 looks good. Queen c8 is also an interesting move, but I, I'm not sure I like it. Queen b6 has been played, okay. So I can take once or not take. To take or not to take. Uh, c5 is an interesting move as well. I'm going to try it, c5. And what's interesting is that black can actually take on b1 uh, after we trade queens. And that might be a rather independent variation, where white is not able to play b4, b5, which they often want to do, and have the rook on the a-file, uh, because my my b pawns will be doubled up. Okay, so here we go. So bishop takes b1 is an interesting choice, but no, they haven't played it. Okay. Uh, so b4. Uh, no, I'm going to play knight c3, just to make sure. Knight d7 will be played, I think. No, knight f6. Okay, I'm wrong. So b4. And I can play b5 just in time. Their a pawn can never capture because their rook would be attacked. Uh, so if they play e6, though, possibly I can play e3, which might be. Oh, no, no, e3 isn't as good because my bishop on c1 hasn't moved yet. Uh, yeah, so bishop f4. Or play b5. And uh, maybe b5 is just the easiest move. Yeah, it's a lot easier to play that. And there's very rare lines where black plays e5, but it's not the time yet, because there's too much of my own pieces on e5. Uh, so g6 or e6, the two developing moves for the bishop. But knight d7 uh, on, from b8 is not a bad choice either. And then I think I have to play b5. Yeah, e6. So bishop f4 is interesting. Uh, knight d7, b5, and stuff happens. But I like I like b5 straight away. I like the uh, immediacy of this move. If that in is indeed a word. Takes and then I could play e4 going going for ridiculous moves, but I think taking is easy. So now the plan is knight c7 check, instantly uh, winning the rook. And something tells me they're not going to fall for that, but there would be a part of me that would really like it. But no, they have fallen for it. Unless there's some very deep uh, counter-attack that I'm missing. But if there is, then well played. If there's not, I win a rook. I'm going to play the obvious, knight c7. And they've resigned. So good for me. Now I'm on... Oh, I was on eight points, but uh, Ferrari fan is now on nine. So they have won their game uh, at about the same time I won mine. So there's Ferrari fan on nine. I'm on eight. There are three players on four points who are all on what's called a streak when they're still winning games in a row. So they get double the points for each win. We're about halfway through the tournament. I think 20, uh, 25 points will be enough to win the whole thing. Probably less than that, but uh, 20, 25 would safely get you first place I think and then 20 points could be a coin flip if you win or not uh, but there's a few other players on four points who either lost their games or drew their games uh, so they're not on a streak uh, there's Kay Kesterson who's on uh, four points on a streak Dark uh, Cohen is on four points Moonmaker four points but no streak uh, Bowina on four points and a streak and then Arad Phonix Phoenix, who is on four points. And I've got someone in 22nd place. So again, everyone else must be playing. 1700? Or 18, no, 1800. They're basically 1800. 
So let's see what they do. And I played them once before, apparently. Because I, I beat them, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. 1-0 to me. But we're playing an English opening. Uh, let's go C6. Now the main line's D4 for white, which promises a small edge. Uh, and here, I could play D5 straight away, but I'm going to play a slightly rarer move, Bishop C5. D3 has been played. Now, ooh, it's too tempting, D5, because white's meant to play D4 earlier, I think. But with Bishop C5, they can't play it. Now, uh, if I play Knight C6, they could play... Um, Knight takes pawn. Ooh, it's tempting to play knight c6 anyway and just, just play bishop f2, but I'm going to be careful here. I think either queen e7 or e4 is better. Or even queen c7. Uh, or bishop d6. Yeah, let's just play carefully, bishop d6. There's no reason for me to play anything ridiculous. Right, knight c6, just make sure that pawn is fully protected. Bishop g5, going for the pawn on uh, d5, so protection of the bishop. And I can play h6 next turn if I need to. Knight b5. Okay, that's worked out well. I think I can do this. And it looks a bit ridiculous playing bishop b8, but it prevents the knight capturing the bishop. I like having the bishop pair. I can play a6 and h6 next turn to annoy them. Ooh, but, but rook here. Interesting move. Castles might be, might be the safest, but I am thinking about less safe alternatives. Yeah, let's go less safe. Let's play a6. Get rid of that knight. It's too good. Knight c3 is the move I suspect will be played. Then h6, getting rid of the bishop. Take it. My bishop on e6 doing a fantastic job. If knight d2 or something, I, okay, it'll b3, fine. I can castle, let's get my king safe before I regret doing it, not doing it. Uh, so far, white might have a slight edge, but I just don't believe it, it's, temp it's permanent doing this. Ooh, e4 is an interesting move. Takes, takes, knight d2, e3, yeah, no, no, forget it, that's rubbish. Bishop a7 is is interesting. Yeah, bishop a7 looks interesting, let's try this. So now I'm lined up with the, uh, that, that rather, rather interesting uh, f2 pawn. I'm wondering if I can sacrifice something. Yeah, knight, knight c5. I mean, I could play bishop c8, keeping my bishop pair. Yeah, let's go for it, bishop c8. And then queen e7 to hit the knight. I mean, perhaps, I think maybe maybe doing this is, is just a bit too much, bishop c8, because it does look slightly suspicious. Uh, so my pawn's being attacked, and also uh, the knight is fully defended. Bring the queen in. Trying to force that knight back. And then possibly just playing bishop back to e6. Or playing f5, going for the attack. Looks quite fun. I do have b5, but that doesn't feel right. Okay, let's go, let's go f5, charge at them. Hope for the best. And then play bishop e6. So far they played very well for an 1800. Oh wow, and they're, they're deciding to open up the lines. That's brave, I like it, I like bravery. Oof, wow, they are they're really letting me go for it. Knight d4 is an interesting move. Uh, pawn takes, knight takes though, I don't like it. Uh, if if that happened, bishop e6 looks good though. Uh, but then pawn takes, bishop takes, knight e4. All right, I'm gonna have to close in my bishop with d4, gaining a small advantage possibly. I have b5 though as a threat, which they have prevented. 
Hmm. Where to put my bishop? Well, b5 first. Simply, simply going for the knight, trying to put it onto uh, onto d2. Okay, so it's run away. Good. Now defend myself with bishop. Uh, where do I want to put the bishop? I mean, d b7 is the move that instinctively I want to play. Maybe I can play rook f6. Maybe I can do this and activate the uh, other rook onto f8. Improving my position. Knight d3, yep. Yeah. Now I do need to guard myself. And f4. Okay, so they're really trying to uh, find something here. Right, rook f8. Uh, f5 is the move I'd be thinking of. Yeah, f5 must be correct. Uh, yeah, and somehow I'm not able to uh, you know, sort of use their weak king. Uh, at least yet. I can't do it yet. So first I'll improve. Bishop b6. Maybe bishop a5 can be useful. Knight b4 is what I'm thinking of, though. No, knight f3 has been played. Preventing me doing that. Or at least making it silly to do that. G6 could be good, though. Uh, but I do have bishop to c3 as a plan, which would lock in the queen side. Or my bishop could be useful. Making the bishop useful is always nice. Uh, so what this does is it tries to go bishop h5 to pin the knight. h4 right uh, okay i don't fully understand that move but okay it makes some sense let's try this i guess it prevents me going g6 straight away maybe i don't know uh this this move at least gets rid of their blockading knight on d3 Then I can maybe play d3 check. And I do have the bishop pair, which is another small edge. So I, can, I mean, I could have played d3 check last move then taken, but I'd lose the pawn. There's no reason to lose a pawn for nothing. If knight g6, I'll just, well, take it with the bishop. Now d3 might be a move. Okay, they, okay, wow, they're, they're letting me go for checks all over the place. Uh... I don't see what their threat is, so I'll go for a check. All of a sudden, my, my position's starting to look good. Uh, bishop d4 could be interesting. kind of want my rooks for uh, d6, though. That's where I want the rook. Maybe this is better. Yeah, and then I can guard the pawn with my rook or with my queen. Uh, trouble is, f6 could be played if I move rook d6. So queen d4 is a move, but then knight, knight to f3. Queen c3 is a move, but nah, it doesn't work. Now nah, let's go d2. Let's keep that pawn fully guarded by the bishop and, and the like. Queen to uh, e2. I do have bishop g5 if I have to play it. And knight f3, bishop h5, h4. Uh, it could trap the bishop if I'm not careful. Knight g6 has been played. Wow, that was unexpected. But highly unexpected. I, I, I don't quite know what to say about that move. Okay, I'll bring my pieces in. Can I just take everything? I'm not sure I can. Uh, I have rook f2 as a move. Uh, okay, so rook takes f1, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes. Uh, pawn d1, queen, queen takes, queen takes e4, check, bishop g2, and I don't quite win. 
so queen d4 might be strongest. Hmm. It doesn't quite feel like I'm getting enough for this. Maybe bishop f2 is better. Let's try this. Bishop f2. So the idea is bishop e1. And then the rooks are not connected anymore. This monstrous pawn on uh, d2 is kind of offset a bit by the monstrous pawn on g6. I have to be a bit careful not to allow their bishop and pieces to coordinate. But yeah, bishop e1 feels right, because I'm guessing I'm getting enough, maybe, for the uh, big sort of counterattack. Ideally, I want to trade queens, because that, that will really uh, make life easier for me. Oh, wow. They've, okay, all right. That's, that's definitely a, a move. Bring this in. I, d I don't see what they're doing. Which always puts, makes me a bit nervous, and I don't see what their plan is. Okay, so they sacked the exchange for the pawn. Uh, I actually can't promote. And my queen has very few squares. That is weird. The queen has almost no squares. Alright, but queen a3 might be the move. Queen d4, uh, queen c1. I don't see where their queen goes, because my rooks are both guarded, the pawn's guarded. There's no way to h7. And rook f1 check could be useful if their bishop was somehow on like d5. Yeah, queen d4, queen c1 looks like the right move. Uh, queen takes rook, rook takes, rook takes pawn, uh, it's not allowed. Queen takes pawn, rook takes, yeah, this looks right. And I think after bishop f3, which is a move, I can take the bishop with the rook on f8. But I also have the quite nice rook f1 check. I used up a fair amount of time in this game. Oh wow, queen there. Didn't see that. Shouldn't work, but maybe it does. Rook f1. Let's see. Rook f1. Uh, oh, good lord. Okay. Rook f1, bishop takes f1. Takes, rook takes. Queen takes, rook takes. No, it doesn't work. Okay. So, <laughs> queen c8 might be a move. I like queen c8. Oh, actually, rook queen takes queen first. Rook takes, then rook c8. Or even rook e1, e2, actually. Rook e2 is even easier. Nice and simple. So now rook e1 check is, is basically the move. And uh, in addition to it uh, queening, it might even checkmate uh, my opponent. Bishop h3, for example, is maybe the best move, and then just rook e1. So my opponent's a good player. They're definitely better than their racing of uh, 1700. <laughs> or maybe I was just playing especially badly. It's difficult in a 10-minute match. Just that deep, that my D pawn was the thing that was my salvation. But I think I misplayed some of the middle game there, with trying desperately to keep my bishop pair. It allowed White comfortable position. They have five minutes, but I do not see a way out. Yep, and resigns. Ooh, I'm now first place. Twelve points. Uh, nine points for both Ferrari fan and Arbareshi, who are both 2,200 players. Chess Queen is 2,200. <laughs> uh, Grandmaster Bogdan Lalic is on four points, who's in fifth place. Uh, and after that, everyone else is on four points. So half an hour to go. Can I hold on to the lead? I'll probably need to win at least two more games to actually win the thing. And I suspect I will be playing... Unless there's nobody left who is uh, available, um, I suspect I will be playing the top like four or five players. And Ferrari fan, as I was speaking, has just landed on 13 points, just having won their game. So I'm now 
uh, bumped down to second. So I may play Ferrari fan, but no, I'm, <laughs> oh, no, I'm playing one of my students, unfortunately. So that's amusing. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, well, I suppose it had to happen at one one point. All right. So he he is black. Uh, Nineteen hundred. Very good player though. I'll play the main line Sicilian. This, but I'm probably going to trade down to an ending fairly quickly because he's a he's a young player and his endings, I suspect, are not as strong as the rest of his game. But let's see how he does against against me. Oh, he's done e5. Yeah, this classical uh, line. So knight b5 is a move. A6, knight c, knight a3. Oh no no, he has to go d6 first, doesn't he? Oh yeah, this was a line by um, Caruana, I think. D6, and then this a4 move is interesting because it prevents a6 b5 for black. So I suspect he will be thinking about this. Uh, the plan is I want to play knight to e3 from b5. So I need to go yeah. So I need to go a3 c4 e3 d5 to finally get my knight to the right place. Uh, but knight c4 is a nice kind of stopping point for a bit. Play bishop e3, bishop g5, uh, castles after bishop e2. You know I've got lots of things I can do with that knight, but a3 is awful. So this is an alternative way of playing, because I, I don't like playing the bishop g5 line, and a6, knight a3, b5, and then I have to like move the knight to d5, and it's all this forcing sequence. Queen a5 has been played, wow, alright, now we're talking. Let's go for him, knight c4. Everything of mine is fully protected at, the, at this exact moment, but the e4 pawn could become weak, so I definitely need to consider that. What I'm thinking is if the queen moves to um, uh, b4, then rook a3 might not be quite as stupid as it looks. Because if knight takes e4, uh, rook b3, but then there's knight takes knight, so may maybe it doesn't work. Queen c7, yeah, it looks like a sensible move. Now, here might be the time for bishop g5. Because if I take that knight and then play knight d5, I'm getting a devastating attack. Fantastic squares for my pieces. Bishop e7 has been played. I, I don't know if that's the right move. It might be. Doubling up the pawns. This is looking awkward. Very awkward for, for black. Still might be okay though. It's one of those positions where, you know, even computers sort of think, eh, white's okay, but you know, what do I do about it? But no, he's gone straight for uh, this. Oh, he's gone for it. Okay. Um, knight takes pawn looks good. Uh, then there's also knight d5. Knight d5, queen uh, d8, knight db6. Oh, wow. I mean, it's one of those positions that I can't actually see how I win. <laughs> um, but knight d5 just looks too good. Looks like such a nice position. His queen has almost no squares. So queen d8. Then bring the knight in. Horrible position for black. The rook is hanging at the moment. They they probably have to save the rook. If they don't, I'll take it. I'll be I'll be very grateful for the rook. Bishop e6 might be the strongest move, but it still looks very very difficult to play. Knight takes d6 as well. It's just such a big threat. So what will Fitzipier play? He's a good player though. He's he's very resourceful. Has a lot of um, a lot of tricks <laughs> up his sleeve, and he is very young as well. He's not even not even ten years old yet. Uh, so he's got a very bright future if he keeps playing chess. Uh, but maybe not such a bright future in this game. It does look it does look rather horrible. Rook b8 is the move he may play in the end. But then knight takes d6 check, hitting his bishop twice. Winning me the exchange. Uh, rook a7 is just awful. I don't see where you're going. Uh, and bishop e6 may be best, but then knight d6, king e7. Uh, knight takes rook. 
and then whichever knight he takes, the other one gets away, and I've got the I've got the clear advantage. The only thing that he may have is that my king is not safe either. So if I'm not, you know, if I'm not totally careful and I play a few careless moves, there may be things in the future, like some sort of queen b4 check uh, coming up, which may fork some of my pieces. So just just to be certain, I need to be I need to be on my toes. Uh, I don't think he can be a Paul Morphy though in castle trying to win by sacrificing the rook. I feel like that would be a bit too much. Uh, but then again, what does he do? Maybe rook b8 is the strongest move. It's, these, it's this uh, classical Sicilian structure with with my two knights on d5 and sort of b6 is another weakness black has. This is why I used to play this all the time as black when I was about 16 years old in uh, in classical chess. I was rated maybe uh, 1800 f uh, fide. Uh, but because I didn't understand a lot of strategy. Oh, he's car he has castles going Paul Morphy style. So I will oblige. I'll take the rook. Uh, but yeah, the problem is that black has lots of weaknesses, so they have to play precisely and very well strategically, but with lots of energy as well. So the energy part I was good at. I could definitely play with energy, sacrificing things and and uh, going for very uh, complicated tactics. But the strategy part I was absolutely awful at. I couldn't get it uh, to work ever, <laughs> so there were plenty of games where I would just fall apart. And here I've won a rook, knight back to b6, saving my knight. I can then trade as well. I don't want to trade everything too quickly though. Now bishop b e6 is fine. I think I will develop my pieces with bishop e2. My knights guarding each other, it's perfect. Uh, knight d4, I'll play c3. Knight takes bishop, queen takes. Again, everything is fine, it's all safe. And then castle, and win with a rook up. So I have not embarrassed myself horribly and lost to my own student. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the good news. Knight d4, yes, knight d4 I thought would be played. c3. I don't want that knight. It's too good. I need to get it out of its outpost. And yes, uh, knight takes, queen takes. If queen c7, I can play knight d5, which is the critical line. That will avoid any tactics, give me complete control, and also get the bishop pair as well. Or well, most likely get the bishop pair. Uh... Let's see, how else could he do this? Uh, he could play knight back to c6. Going backwards is not my favourite thing to do, but it's at least a move. Uh, and if knight c6, I think again I can just control the position with knight d5, but all castles. But no, he's gone for this. Uh, so if bishop takes um, knight, no he hasn't done it, queen c7 has been played. Yep, yeah, so knight d5. And then... If uh, bishop takes knight, pawn takes, of course. I've kept my knight on c4 safe with my queen. So what? what's the actual material? I am just a rook up. There's no... Uh, well, unless you want to give black like the extra sort of third of a pawn or half a pawn for the bishop pair, which is about to be removed anyway. Uh, it's a slight shame I couldn't put a knight on d5 forever, but I think... You know, you can't always get uh, everything you want. That's why I pre-moved that, because uh, that's the only only way I could ever play pawn takes was to do this. Now, uh, okay, going there. I can play b3, but there's, there's no reason to move pawns. Knight to e3 is very, very safe. How will he continue? Queen c5 is a move, then I think castling would be safe. Hmm. So how will he continue this? H3, as uh, so H6, I mean, is a safety move going for Luft with the king. There's no chance of me mating him. No, bishop g5 has been played. Okay, castles. Getting myself perfectly safe. And if bishop takes, I don't know if I should take with the f pawn. That might be best. No, he's done this move instead. What's the point of it? 
I don't see. All right, well, let's do a little fork. Just a little one. <laughs> queen g4. He is okay after queen d8, though. Unfortunately for me, he's he's okay. Uh, but then, like, knight f5, and... Oh, no, he's done it. Okay. Get the rook. Checkmate next turn. All right, well, good game. You know, he's, he's playing someone 500 points higher raiser than him, so it's, it's not nothing to be embarrassed about losing that game. All right, but Ferrari fan is still only three points behind me. So even if, uh, even if I win ne the next game, get 20, he could win two games and get 21. So I can't can't rest. And also, Grandmaster Bogdan Lalic, who wasn't even playing or wasn't on the field for a long time, has suddenly sprung up, and he's fourth place on 12 points. One more win, and he'll get the same as me. And actually, I'm slightly higher rated, but, uh, you know, it could easily be the case that he, he leapfrogs me at the end with 20 minutes left to go in the tournament. That's enough for one long game, or maybe two medium-length games, like this one was, with uh, 20 minutes in total being on the clock and there being 10 minutes left on our timers each. And I'm playing Lalich! Wow, I'm playing Lalich. Okay. This could be a very interesting match. I might offer him a draw fairly soon, because we both want uh, to play lots of games, we don't want to play very long ones. So let's see how he plays this line. Okay, I'll do this, because I, I know he can take, but it's, it's uh, something I'm willing to risk. Okay, let's do another rare line. Pawn takes. Now, Lalic, I did a video, a video on him a few day, well, about a week ago because I played him in the British Championship, and he is a very, very strong player who is uh, deadly in the opening. Very, very strong. Who I believe was 2,600 at one point, and he won the Hastings Congress about, uh, about 15 years ago, I think. Maybe a bit longer, or maybe a bit less. Uh, than that, but still formidable opponent. I think knight f3 might be a good move here. Knight f3 e4, knight to d4. Uh, knight c5 doesn't work. Yeah, let's try this. Knight f3. Let's see what uh, what Bogdan plays. Yeah, e4, knight d4. And I have a few interesting moves. Yeah, queen f6 is, I'm assuming it's theory. And I think if bishop c5, I might castle and offer him the draw. Hoping that, yeah. So let's see. See if he takes it, that's the main one. So if he doesn't take it, then we're in for a long match. No, he doesn't take it. Okay, he's playing on. All right. Uh, D4 might be an interesting move. Sacking the pawn. Let's go for it. Oh, whoops. Oh, I nearly pre-moved the wrong thing there. <laughs> I pre-moved knight to d4, but he could take en passant. And then if I played knight, I'd actually play the move knight d4 from there. Which would be a huge error, I think. He's taken with a bishop, yes. Okay. And I'm hoping rook d1's okay. And now we have... We've got a fascinating position coming up. How will Lalich choose to continue? He's chosen with this move. Okay, he's okay. He's done that. All right, Bishop F4, gain a tempo on him. Queen H5, brilliant move. I'm wondering if I can give up the pawn. 
I might be able to. Queen c4 is an interesting move. I could try. b5. Yeah, let's go for let's go for this. Queen c4. Hoping that my my uh, pawns hold up, and even though I'm a pawn down, you know his his bad pieces could be useful to me. If I drop two pawns, that might be that might be a little too much. Uh, however, if if b5, queen c2, pawn takes pawn, he's got a very nice centre but no development. Perhaps I can play queen b3, and uh, he can't defend d and uh, D and B. If queen e2, queen takes uh, d5, and I actually win the rook. B5 has been played, okay. Uh, queen c2, let's see what he does. Does he take the pawn? Actually, yeah, maybe he does, because uh, I can't... I can't stop bishop b7 at the end. No, knight, oh, knight b4, of course. Oh dear, that's such a big mistake. Oh dear, all right. Yeah, a terrible move from me. All right, well, I'll, I guess I'll try to uh, try to make life difficult. Yeah, I missed that. Oh well, at least at least I can keep him working for a long time. Bishop b7, yeah, good move. My bishop pair might be might be somewhat useful. He still has a little work to do. I'm hoping for maybe if I can play things like rook d4, I could uh, I could go for the e4 pawn. Knight B, no, knight B6 is rubbish, of course it's rubbish, I'll take the queen. Um, what do you do here? Rook E6? No, A5. A5, interesting, yes. Bishop A6 could be done in the future. Alright, well let's continue as I mean to go on. Rook, rook D4. <laughs> it's a caveman type move, and yeah, he's, he's obviously seen it. Um, it ooh, Queen C2 is not playable now, because the bishop might hang. Actually, how do I save the bishop? Huh. Yeah, clever. All right. Rook d1, then. Hmm. Yeah, not good at all. Bishop h3 might be a move. Uh, Rook d8. Wow, yeah, this does, this does not look good at all. I'm going to try it anyway, bishop h3, hoping for hoping for something. Maybe I can play queen a7 or something, I don't know. Oh, f5, right, he is... Okay, he's going for that. Yes, true. Uh, all right. Ooh, okay, I just realised I'm, I'm pinned on the G files. I can't even take the G pawn. Uh, but may, maybe I'm still okay, though. Well, I say okay. Maybe I'm still not completely lost. Didn't even take me. Very nice. Very nice, that's the best. Yeah, rookie six, very clever, yeah. So he is He's going for some sort of clever checkmating plan. I've got my own plan, which I don't think will work. But at least it's it's got a little bit of sting to it. Thinking maybe rook takes knight is, is the fun move. And 
then bishop takes uh, b5 and I get I get a pawn for the exchange but I'm already a pawn down anyway so, so no, two pawns down oh dear yeah, I'm really not doing well oh and this move yeah true I don't have a way out okay queen c2 then knight takes takes e3 or not e3 or not to e3 that's the question um Hmm. All right, rookie one to e3, possibly. <laughs> I think uh, I think queen e7 will be on the way. And surprise, surprise, I'm right. Uh, queen e7. I don't have b4 because of on passant. Uh, I really don't want to trade queens, though. Alright, fine. I'll, I'll trade queens. I mean, e3 is the move you may play anyway. And then, I don't know, I have just a tiny, tiny bit of, of play left, but it's looking, <laughs> looking very horrible to play this. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I don't know. Bishop e2. Try to try to fight him off. Yeah, the king's coming in. Uh, how to make how to make contingency plans here? What do I do? This is really horrible. It's just throttling me with this. All right. I'll give him the open file. I'll let him have the open file. It'd be nice to him. R oh, rook a4 is quite nice as well. The threat's rook takes b4, I take back, and then he takes on, on c5 with the king. No, he's played this instead. Probably even stronger. Alright, bishop f1. Then my... Oh, yeah, very nice. Okay, well, the, the plan was to try and hold him like this. But it looks like... Uh, Lalich is not is not going for it. All right, let's go for him. <laughs> try to try to get some kind of counterplay. Oh yeah, of course he has that. Oh dear. Only chance I have now is to somehow. Some oh very nice. Okay, Rook C one. Yeah, my only chance to somehow win a pawn and then and then do like twelve other really good moves. But this this ain't looking good. <laughs> this is looking looking worse by the second. Uh, all right, I'll play on a little bit, but I have no hope. Try to. Bully my way into his half of the board. An excellent, good move. Oh, e three's coming. Brilliant. I think I can resign. All right, I'll resign. All right, good game. He's a grandmaster after all. Okay, so now uh, both myself and Bogdan Lalic are on sixteen points, but he's on a streak. Ferrari fans on 17 though, with seven minutes left. So with the late entry of the Grandmaster, it looks like he's sweeping the field. Though he may not have enough time to win his final game. Uh, so I might come third in the end. But if I can win quickly, perhaps I can I can do something. Uh, the only people near me, uh, one guy is on who's Arbareshi is on 13, but 2200 level, nearly 2300 actually. But he's he's withdrawn or not withdrawn. He's paused, so he's not playing the last few games. Lalic is doing the same actually. He's staying where he is, not playing his last game. So Ferrari fan is still playing, and oh, I've got a fifteen hundred. I do have a chance here. Need him to play quickly though. What can I do? It's the most aggressive move. Uh, D five. Let's go for him. Then C six. No, he's played boring. All right, fine. 
I need to win in six minutes, 25 seconds. Very quick moves that need to be played. Need a very attacking opening. Me playing c5. Oh, okay. Or c6. <laughs> or c6. And then oh yeah, b5. Charge acid. Try to go c4. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> d4. <laughs> and then have, have lots and lots of space. Try and squash the life out of him. Strays away. I'm playing d3 next. Oh, okay. He's... Yeah, good move. All right. Yeah, d3 anyway. I don't care. I'm going for d3. And then if pawn takes c4, uh, d takes c2. Hyper aggressive. Uh, and then I think I might play bishop takes d3, actually, uh, if he takes there. No, he's played c3. Okay. Uh, do I play knight c6? No, bishop c5. Let's, let's go for go for this. Okay, and he's played well. Um, my queen needs to get active somehow. All right, uh, g5, going straight for the attack. Yep, don't care about the pawn. Don't care about that. Going for mate. Playing, I'm playing extremely recklessly, but I only have, you know, what four minutes to win the game. Okay, bring the queen in. Okay, look terrifying as uh, as this goes. Got bishop e4 coming. Oh, he is. Okay, all right. I'll take I'll take the knight. I'll, I'll be I'll be curious. <laughs> I still haven't moved my knights, <laughs> but then again, he has. He's not able to move his entire queenside uh, pieces, apart from bishop b2. Okay, g3. All right, going for. Going for mates here. Okay, can I do bishop f2? Uh, bishop f2, king takes, queen takes, king e3. Uh, queen takes. Knight over, this just looks too good. Let's go for it. Don't quite know how he's surviving, but maybe he is. His attack just looks so good. I mean, just look at my pieces. They're absolutely wonderful. But then again, I can't see the mate. Uh, I can't do queen f2 because the, the piece blocks me. Um, this isn't really fair. I should be winning this very easily. Uh, rook goes over, maybe? Or pawn takes? All right, well, I'm going to do this anyway because he might do king takes knight. Oh, he did this. Okay. Um, this is incredible. How am I not winning this? Okay, check. Rook b8. Cut him off. Keep him. Keep him cut onto onto a4. Then queen a5. Mate is on the way with two minutes left. Two minutes left in the game. Such a beautiful position. I mean, both of us have, will have made tons of blunders, but yeah, he's done this. And then checkmate. Wonderful. Okay, so I am now first place on 18 points, and I'm going to pause. There's no way I can win in two minutes. So 18 points for me, Ferrari fan. 17 points. Uh, so let's see if I can look for his game. Let's look at his, because he is 2,000 rated player. Very, very good player. If he wins against uh, KH Swampy in the next two minutes, uh, I assume it's a he, but it might be a she, uh, they, will, they will win the match. Oh dear, it looks like that's going to be achieved, unfortunately. Fantastic. Let's have a look at the previous moves. Great position at the end. So it was a perk. Then it was not a perk. Oh no, it is still a perk. B5, yes. H4. D5, yeah, very nice move. Going for the B pawn. And now, knight E5 was played. So he took, well they took. 
But bishop e3, so black's bishops are horrible. White then attacked on the king's side. Bishop f3, I'm not sure of. Bishop h6. Takes, takes. Black cannot go king's side, so they castled queen's side. Doesn't, doesn't normally happen. Now here, white brought the queen to pin. Black played queen d7 to stop the pin, and white charged at him. Uh, or her, actually, kh okay, Pompey could be female or male. Anyway, uh, rook a3, yeah, doubling up the rooks. Black tried trading queens. White wasn't having any of it. White doubled up. Black tried holding. White came across with the queen. Black tried still holding it. And then we got this combination here with black still thinking. And it's possible that they're going to be spiteful and actually uh, not um, make a move for the next 30 seconds. Uh, but to update Moonmaker is on 18 points as well as me. So even though I'm first place just because of my rating, um, there is, it is tied. Uh, but no other player can get can get to 18 apart from this Ferrari fan who is white. And it's mate, it's mate in two moves after king b8. Actually, no, it's not, because then rook takes uh, king c7. Okay, so black survives. And they have been spiteful. Or not spiteful, but they've been <laughs> they've uh, they've not allowed white to win the game and resign. So I am first place based on tiebreaker with a with a superior performance. I will add, twenty three fifty one, seven games played, eighty six percent win rate. It's pretty good. I only lost to Bogdan Lalic, Grandmaster. Then nine games played for Moonmaker, twenty fifty performance, still not bad, higher than their rating. 67 win performance, and then Ferrari fan who got a bit robbed at the end, but only six games finished. Uh, so, uh, winning practically all of them, but I believe, yeah, drawing the first game, like I suspected, that's how they were on and on.